Jobs make it possible to automate workloads. Working together with Databricks repos and the Git integration they provide, Jobs round out the feature set provided by Databricks to accommodate a complete CI-CD lifecycle. In this video, we're going to see how to create a simple job that executes a notebook. The notebook we'll use as our subject is the one we have here that uses a Databricks autoloader feature to perform an incremental ETL operation. Using autoloader in batch mode, we will process any new or updated data files since the last time it was run and ingest those records into our bronze table. Let's go to the jobs page where we create and manage jobs. Let's create a job by clicking the create job button. Here is where we configure the task implementing our job. We'll give that task a name. Now we choose the type, which can be one of the following. A notebook from a workspace run in its entirety from start to finish. A Java class from a jar file installed as a library on the cluster. A Spark submit command that provides a generic interface for running Java, Python, or Scala applications. A Python script from DBFS. Let's specify notebook, then navigate the workspace to locate the notebook we want to run. Now let's click confirm. Now let's decide on a cluster. In a production environment, Databricks recommends using the new job cluster option. Using this option, the job scheduler will start a new cluster for the job, thereby guaranteeing a pristine and isolated environment in which to run the job. For now though, let's use an all-purpose cluster we already have created. There are advanced configuration options that allow us to define parameters to pass, dependencies, and retry and timeout policies. But for now, let's skip these and click Create. With the job created, we can now add more tasks, schedule the job, modify the cluster configuration, or configure alerts or permissions. Furthermore, we can allow multiple instances of the job to execute simultaneously, if desired. Let's configure an alert. Alerts issue emails at various stages of the job lifecycle. Let's click Add to add a new one. Let's specify an email address for the alert. For this example, I'm using a temporary email address courtesy of dispostable.com. For this example, let's configure an alert only if the job fails and click Confirm. In a moment, we will see how to schedule our job, but for now, let's test the job by running it. Let's click Run Now. We can review the results from the Runs tab. It takes a few moments to execute the job, particularly if the cluster needs to be restarted. Ultimately, we see a new entry appear in the completed Runs table. We can see from the table and from my inbox that the job failed. Let's click on View Details to see why. This takes us to an immutable snapshot of the notebook state reflecting the run. If we scroll down, we see the problem. The call to autoloader did not specify a schema, so it will attempt to infer one from the source data. But no source data files are present yet, and so this inference cannot be made. Since it's best to take advantage of autoloader's schema inference and evolution capabilities, specifying a schema to fix this problem is not advisable. The best solution in this case might simply be to ignore this error. It is little more than a warning that no data files are present yet. Let's go back to our jobs page and set up a schedule to run our job nightly. We'll click the Edit Schedule button. In the Schedule dialog, let's select Scheduled. We will set this job to run at 1 o'clock a.m. every day. Pay attention to the time zone setting. By default, it is set to UTC, which may map to a different actual time depending on where your control plane is hosted. One important thing to note is that the job schedule does not provide any real-time guarantees. Jobs may be delayed or skipped due to many factors such as network latencies and outages, cluster start times, concurrency settings, and time zone changes. If your application has low latency or real-time requirements, consider using something else. Before finishing up, Let's save compute resources by deleting this job we created. Back in the Jobs page, let's locate the job we created and click on the X in the Actions column. In this video, we saw how to create and manage a job that executes a notebook. We also got an introduction to alerts, schedules, and troubleshooting tools. We hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.